Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with the uh, the little Perzo Django. I've not done a Django video for a little while, so uh, I thought I'd have a, you know, uh, a go at one. Um, I do have a set of um, hot grips um, for this bike. I've had them for a little while. And obviously it's it's winter now, it's a bit cold outside, so I thought, well, you know, now is as good a time as any to get these bad boys fitted. Um, it's a little bit involved on a scooter, it's uh, probably a bit more involved than it is on a motorcycle to be fair because there's a lot of plastic that you have to route the cables through because the battery on this bike is right at the back and obviously the grips are at the front so it's got to come down the bodywork, all the cabling, down the bodywork uh, through, you know, under the, uh, the footboard to the battery where, it's, where, where they connect. Um, there is a little switch as you can see in the picture which I'm going to mount in the front panel, in the kick panel um, so obviously we have to drill some bodywork but uh, yeah um, should be a quite a nice little project to uh, to while away a Saturday morning. So uh, let's dig into it. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to remove some of the bodywork, um, only as much as is necessary to be able to route the cables properly. Um, naturally, it may be well possible to route the cables without removing any of the bodywork, just by feeding it through down gaps and stuff. But I want to make sure that it's all secure, uh, you know, tie wrapped into position, all that sort of stuff. Because um, the last thing you want it to do is end up hanging down on the road or whatever. You can imagine the carnage that will cause. Um, so. There's a few panels that I'm going to remove and they have to be removed in a certain order because the way this is put together um, means that you can't remove one panel without removing another if you get me. For example, the, 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 the kick panel on the back here can't be removed without removing the front panel first. You can't remove the headlight shroud without moving this first because the screws are hidden behind this one if you get what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it in a fairly methodical order. It's all mentioned in the uh, in the manual as it goes, and I'll, I'll leave a link to the workshop manual in the in the description so that you can go and have a look, and you'll see what I mean about the the order of the bodywork. Anyway, first off, front panel. Right then, for, uh, front panel. First things first, we've got these little chrome trims on the side. They just need to pop out, and there you go. You can see how it hooks in at the back and clips in at the front. So you kind of have to gently prise it forward bring it out and then do that if you get what I mean. One on each side, so we'll get both of them off. And then after we've done that, we've come around the back here, we've got, we've got a couple of screws. Just in here, we've got a couple of torque screws. I think they're T30, but I can't be certain. One in there, one in there, and the same on the other side. Four screws, and then this front panel will literally lift off. Okay, both the trims off. All of the screws are out. They are T25, just for confirmation. Um, obviously, um, I had to get the tool in there just to be certain what they were. Uh, but yeah, two T20, uh, four T25 screws in the back. And now, you can see it's a bit loose. Now, at the bottom here, there's a couple of little plastic clips, which you need to overcome in order to get it off, just like so. And there we are. Right. Now, what we've got here is we've got... The side light we've got the indicators and also we have a temperature probe for the external temperature and all of those need disconnecting just like so you can't get them wrong because um they're uh, you, you know they're shaped to go into the right uh, sockets um well the temperature one is a specific shape all of these i suppose you could swap over accidentally however if you look um if you look at the the wiring you see that indicator is black that one is white but the color of the wiring also matches the color of the wiring on the actual indicator itself so it's worth bearing that in mind when it comes to putting it back together um, so that they all go into the right place okay so that is the front panel off first of the panels so let's move on to the next one okay obviously because these are um handlebar grips what we do need to do is root cabling down to each of the uh, each of the grips that are there um, you know each of the handlebars so this um, top fairing does need to come off. And now, first things first, what we need to do is take the sheet. This is known as a sheath guide. This little plastic 
trim in here and it's just held in with two again T25s. And then that pops out. And there we can see you've got access to most of the cabling. Right, next, um, what we'll do is the two covers on top of the master cylinders, or the master cylinder reservoir, should I say. They can both come off. And then next, we're gonna remove the screws for the top, uh, the top cowl. Okay, for the top cowl, there's four screws that hold it in place. There's one just there, again on the same, the same on the other side, and then one there, and again, the same this side. So those four need to come out, I'll whip them out and then we'll bring it back in and we'll pull the, co the, uh, the cowling off. Okay, so with those four screws removed, it's kept there. You need to grab the bottom and give it a little slight light tug and you'll hear it'll just free itself. Just like so. And then all you need to do is disconnect the headlight wiring, which is quite difficult to do with only one hand. And there we go. So that's the headlight fairing, put that to one side, and then um, I think we can, yeah, we can leave the speedo fairing. The speedo fairing doesn't need to be removed at all. It's perfectly good. We've got good enough access in here uh, to get cables in, so we can leave that one. Okay, I think, um, what we'll need to do next is some of the rear panelling and then probably the footboard. I don't think we're going to need to remove the kick plate, to be honest. I reckon we might get away with that, but if if we have to, we have to. It's not a big deal. There's only a few screws holding it on. Next thing we're going to take out is the storage box. There's two T25s at the front, just here. Just whip them out. Drop them into the box. That screw there doesn't need to come out, that's just holding the inspection panel in, uh, but the inspection panel is actually screwed to this box, so there's no need to remove it. Uh, and then at the back here, we've got two 10 mil screws. Just take them out. Now on this particular one, we've got a uh, cable coming through, a grommet for, um, you know, uh, uh, Optimate. Um, so I will need to remove that, but most most bikes won't have that unless obviously they've done that as well. I'll get that out in a moment. Right, to get the storage box out, it's just simply a case of moving, removing the um, rear cover. Again, that is held in with one screw. Uh, I'd already removed that, put that down on one side. And then lift the box out. And obviously I just need to feed me grommet through for me cable. Okay, got the box out. Um, there's me uh, cable for me battery charger. I had to um, actually de-pin it in order to get it out because I've made the hole ever so slightly small. Um, I, I, I did that quite a while ago and I completely forgot about it. But anyway, we digress. What I need to do next is remove this lower panel here below the front of the seat. And that is held in here with a couple of uh, 10 mil screws and then up here with a couple more Torx uh, T25s. So I'll get them out and then we'll pull that off because that, that's, that's dead easy. And then we'll look at the side panels. Right, that's all the, all the screws removed. Now if I drop the seat ever so slightly, the panel will pop forward like so and then just lift out and then put the seat back up. And there we are, put that to one side so it doesn't get broken. Right, next what we're gonna do is this one at the back here. Now, the one at the back is just held in with two screws. Uh, again, as ever, T25. This one on this side is particularly rusty. Could probably do with being replaced, really. And then this side. Go and then 
she'll just pop out like just like that and then disconnect the connector for the little light and there we go and as you can see what we've done here is we've uncovered some more screws which will secure the side panels so that's what we're going to move on to next right then side panels there are fasteners behind this chrome effect trim and there's a another t25 screw holding the front on now this bit of trim can be a bit of a pig to get on and off um, but we'll we'll manage It should be a case of sliding it forward and then it'll come out of its little clips but sometimes that's easier said than done so <clears throat> there we go you can see these little clips here and they hook onto these little hooks so basically you've got to just slide it forward and then pull it off um, and yeah don't don't try and prise it off because you will damage something but as you can see now we've got that off we went to cover it one, two, three screws here, which will all need to come out, and these two panels will then be able to be split. Right, to get this lower panel off, um, there's actually more than three, there's four, there's another one there. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, but also, behind the footrest, there's one just there. There's another one just here where my finger is, literally underneath the D for Django, straight underneath. And then obviously the one we uncovered um, at the back when we took the uh, the little panel off with the little number plate lighting. So what I'll do, I'll whip all of those screws off and then that panel will be ready to come off. Right then, that's all the screws removed. That should allow this fairing to be pulled out. There we go. Just like that. In fact, it's actually easier with the peg out ever so slightly. And there we go, that is the lower fairing removed. And as you can see, that uncovers the back of the footboard and one of the bolts that holds it in. Now, it seems a little bit weird that we're having to remove both panels because we, you know, we're gonna wire these um, heat grips to the battery and you can probably get away with it, just one side, but because we've got to take the footboard off, we've got to take both off. It's only another about, what, six screws and then that one comes off and then we can get this off. So what I'll do, I'll get the panel on the other side off and then we'll look at the footboard. Okay, so that is the two lower side panels removed. Um, we don't actually need to remove the upper ones at all. I'm pretty sure we can uh, manage without removing those. Um, but having just checked the manual, we do need to remove the bracket for the saddle um, because we won't be able to get the footboard out. It'll just be in the way. Um, and I think we'll be all right with these. Hopefully we won't need to remove them. Um, yeah, so what I'll do, um, remove this and to do so, there is a, another T25 screw at each side here, just at the front of the fairing panel. There's a two, there's two screws just here, which need to be removed. And then there's a bolt on either side here. So I'll get those two screws, those two screws, and those two bolts out, and then we'll remove the whole seat and bracket out of the way. And then hopefully we, uh, we won't need to remove these. That's the plan anyway. Um, if we do, we do, but I don't really want to have to if I don't, if I don't need to. So I'll get them out and then uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, so that is all of those brackets removed. Um, as I said, it was fairly, fairly straightforward. Um, right, now footboard. Um, there's four screws which are exposed. One there, one there, and they're the same on the other side. Um, but there are some which you can't see. Now to get to them, you have to remove these. Both that one and the same on the other side. They just literally held in with these little lugs. They pop off dead easy. And then also the same on the center one. And there's the last screw. So one there, one there, and one there. These two, you, you can leave them alone. There's nothing under those. So yeah, I've got another uh, seven screws to remove. I'll get those seven out and then we'll get this footboard off. Okay, so that is all seven of the, uh, the fasteners removed. Now, should be a case of simply lifting the rear. And 
put it in backwards. There we go. Takes a little bit of effort and then a little bit of maneuvering around stuff to get her out, but there we go. As you can see, it's more than doable without removing these. Now, here's the fuel tank, as you can see, and you can see also that we've got plenty of access underneath here to feed the cable in down um, for the for the grips to get to the battery. And there's also plenty of places where we could tie wrap it to secure it neatly in place. And that is the main aim of this uh, exercise by removing all of this um, plastic, it gives us the ability to be able to do that. And also from here, we can drop the cables down and we'll be able to get them out of these little gaps here. So yeah, we've now got all the access that we require um, with the exception of obviously the battery compartment, but that'll be the last thing that we do. Um, so yeah, now we can actually get on with the uh, the actual act of fitting the kit. So let's get the box open and have a look at what's in the box. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll open the box. As you can see, this is specifically made for scooters. Uh, 50 to 250 cc, not really sure what the difference makes with the engine size. As long as the generator can, is uh, you know good enough to power them, it shouldn't be too, uh, too problematic. Um, right. So, inside it looks like we've got uh, a wiring loom, we've got a few bits and pieces out, so let me pop this open. There we go. So, here's the grips themselves. Oh, they smell brand new rubber. Pull the cables out for each of those, and they'll be sided, so left, left hand side, and right hand side. I would imagine that the diameter inside is different. Yeah, as you can see, the right hand side one, the internal diameter is actually ever so slightly wider and that's to accommodate the actual throttle tube. Um, obviously the left hand one doesn't have that, so it's slightly narrower. I'll pop them down there and have a look at the rest. Okay. Um, oh, they even give you a little, um, 22 mil bit in order to be able to drill through the plastic um, to fit the switch. So we'll come on to that shortly. I'll pop that over there. Uh, in the package, they give you, um, ah, it looks like they give you some little, little caps to go over the ends. Um, if you don't have bar ends, I guess. There's glue to glue the grips in place because obviously you don't want them really turning. And they give you some tie wraps as well, again, which is, you know, that's a nice touch. Uh, some, tie, some tie wraps are uh, um, good, you know, just to be included. If you don't have any to hand, then it's nice that they include that kind of thing. Um, there's a little bit of heat shrink here. I'm not sure what that's for at this stage, but it will become apparent of that, of absolutely no doubt. Okay, so let's have a look at the actual loom itself. I'd imagine it's going to be quite long to accommodate anything up to, I mean, you know, this, the, the Suzuki Bergman is a massive scooter. 400 cc job so if you were going to fit them to that you know it uh, gives you plenty of slack but then again i suppose you could fit regular motorcycle uh, ones to the bergman now there's a little led light here i'm presuming that's a power led for when the switch is in the um on position there's two positions well three positions if you include the off position but there's a low heat off is in the middle and then high heat um, and it's a nice little weatherproof weatherproof switch is quite quite neat um, yeah and that'll be a power a power LED so that'll be positioned somewhere close to the switch I guess so that you can you know be aware that it's that it's actually uh, on otherwise it'll uh, drain the battery now one thing to note with these that you don't that um, obviously with, with the, the the kits fitted to other bikes like the ones that i fitted to the uh, sv1000 for example if you want to go and watch that video then i'll leave a link to it up in the corner now um they have a, an in intelligent heat controller now you can adjust the heat settings uh, countless times i think there's like seven or eight maybe even nine settings i can't remember off the top of my head um and it's just literally a little push button which you can operate with the gloved hand but um, when the ignition's turned off, it detects that the ignition's turned off. It detects that there is no current being fed to the battery by the, uh, by the charging system. 
um, and then it automatically will turn itself off to avoid draining the battery. Now this one won't. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that if this is left on, it will carry on draining the battery. So that's why they give you a little power LED, I guess. Um, and that's, that's one thing to bear in mind, that you don't really have to worry too much um, with the other kits. So yeah, as you can see, we've got plenty, plenty of cable because this is gonna go under the footboard, up to the battery up there, up the front of this panel. And I'm not sure roughly where I'm gonna mount this, possibly around here, just above the little, uh, just above the little shopping hook, um, maybe there or perhaps here. Um, I think I might mount it there actually. I think that's probably gonna be the best place. Now, obviously I need to make sure that there's nothing behind um, that's gonna interfere with anything. We do have um, the, this is a cable, I can't remember which one this is actually, I think that's for, yeah, that's for this door. So this little cable is the one that operates the, uh, the little plunger for this storage panel. Um, but we've got plenty of space behind here to be able to, to mount both the switch and the little LED. So um, I think what we'll do is probably start by routing the cabling um and then uh, yeah we can basically then see um what how much slack we've got how much spare cable and you know fine fine tune the routing of the cable before we go firm and start drilling holes on anything so yeah what i'll do now is uh start routing the cable okay so i'm going to start by feeding the cable down this little hole here and it will come out hopefully with a bit of wiggling down near where the front of the kickboard goes it's going to be a bit fiddly but we'll get there in the end this is the fun bit after all there we go. so now I've got that some of the cable through to give us a bit of, bit of slack. Obviously any excess cable would just get tie wrapped up and tucked out of the way. I mean we've got loads of space to tuck things out of the way even here. Um, so there we go. Right, well I'll, do. I'll leave a little bit of slack up, up here. Put that down there for now. And again, as you can see, we've got plenty of cable to get to the to the battery under here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to run it all the way along here. And that gives me something that I can tie wrap the cabling to. Okay, now here, I think the best bet is probably to take it up a similar route to the cable that goes to the seat unlocker or the seat catch. Pop it up here. If the fuse element will go through, will it go through? Let's have a look. That's a negative. Okay, so that's not going to happen because the little fuse holder is too fat to fit through the gap. But that said, what we can do instead is just tie wrap it either side to the cable, I guess, just like that. Um, that won't that won't matter. And then 
up here again i reckon we can get i reckon it'll fit through this little channel that it goes through i reckon we'll find, soon find out won't we yep and there we go and then that comes up to here now what i'm probably going to have to do um, because there's no this is a sealed box and obviously what i had to do was make a hole for the um charging cable for the optimate to go through with a little grommet into the box so i'm going to do the same with these i'll make another hole within the battery box or i could even probably get through the same hole actually uh get having given it a <laughs> slight bit of consideration it'll probably go through the same hole um because they, they, you know it's a, it's a rubber grommet with, with plenty of plenty of slack in it um so i'll probably do do, do that and it it, it saves me drilling another hole so what i'll do leave that over there for the moment because we don't need that at the, um, at the moment and we certainly don't want to connect it yet so i'm not going to tie wrap anything up because i don't know how much slack i'm going to have where everything's going to be positioned all that sort of stuff but i think the next thing we're going to do is have a look at where we're going to put the switch and i'm still erring on putting it here i reckon that's probably going to be the best bet just here uh, probably the switch just below the cable for the for the door and the LED just above it. I reckon that's going to be the way ahead. Okay, before I go any further, I've just um, realised I made a bit of a mistake. A bit of a childlike error, and I'm not too proud to admit it, so I'll um, tell you all about it so that you don't go and do the same. Um, I've obviously fed all the cabling through to the battery, but um, I haven't mounted this in the hole yet. So, I could disconnect it, there's six cables going into the back of it, but as you can see, they're all black. Now, I would have to remember exactly where each one of these went um, to the correct pin in order to make sure that it was functioning correctly. But I think the easiest thing for me to do is pull all the cable back through, drill the hole, feed it through the hole so that I could literally just pop it in, um, and then feed it back again. Uh, that's going to be the easiest thing, so I'll do that. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to pull it all back through. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is drill the hole. So we'll get the hole drilled and then we can feed the cable through. Okay, I've finalised my decision on where I'm actually going to put the switch. And as you can see, I've drilled a small pilot hole um, just to ensure that the the, uh, the drill bit that they supply in the kit um, will be centralised and make a nice neat hole. Um, this is a 22 mil. Now, confusingly, it does say 20 mil in the instruction manual for the uh, for the grips. It says that they've supplied a 20 mil. Um, I've double checked the the actual socket um, itself, and as you can see, it is a 22 mil hole, not 20. So I don't know why they said um, 20 in the kit. Um, but uh, and they say 20 in the instruction, then supply 22 in the kit. Uh, a bit odd, but anyway. So what we're going to do is um, drill this hole out. Now I'm going to do it fairly slowly, I think, actually, um, because any if I go too fast, I'll probably just melt the plastic around it, and it won't be very neat. there we go and that is the hole drilled now as you can see I've got a little bit of plastic all over the place here so what I'll do I'll clean all this up and then we'll move on to the next stage which will be um, to drill a small hole for the little LED which is going to go directly above it I think if I go above or below uh, I don't know other side and then uh, we'll drill the, the next hole now the next hole is um, 6.5 mil for the little uh, power LED so yeah, what I'll do as well is I'll just clean up the edges of this hole yeah, with a little, a little file. I don't want to take too much material off, otherwise I'll end up enlarging the hole. But I just want to tidy the edges up, get some, rid of some of these little players. And then uh, yeah, well I'll bring it back. I'll get the hole drilled for the little power LED because um, it's just drilling a hole. And then we'll start feeding all the cables through. 
Okay, so what I've done, the uh, the little LED is fitted in the bottom hole now, six and a half mil. And then now what I need to do is get the um, get the cable and feed it all the way through the upper hole, along with these. And that's the connector for the LED, with the connector is obviously on the other side. And then pop that into position like so. And there we go. That is it. That was pretty, pretty nifty. Um, just want to make sure that the little rubber cover doesn't go over the. Yeah, it does. I think it's supposed to go over the actual back of the connector itself so that it forms a bit of a seal against the plastic bodywork. I think that's supposed to be the way it is. Soon find out if it doesn't fit correctly. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, uh, the rubber boot is now trapped behind the plastic of the uh, plastic bodywork and there we go I think what I'll do I'll put a little blob of glue on the back just to keep it in place okay so I've uh, got the cable routed back up towards the battery box uh, exactly the same place as it was before and um, but yeah that's done and we'll sort out the battery end later what we're gonna do next is start to fit the grips now I'll start with the left hand one because that's the easiest because uh, obviously the right hand one's got a throttle tube on it and um, what I do need to do is just undo the bolt on the bar end. Wait. There's like a little rubber bush inside the inside the bar, which as the bolt is tightened into it, it swells um, to prevent the, uh, the the bar end coming out. Okay, so I'll pop that down to one side, and then the grip. On this will probably just twist off. Yeah. There we go. And there is the grip. No need to cut it off. It wasn't good. It, well, I mean, it has been glued on at some point because you can see the remnants of the glue inside. But obviously, it's come unstuck with age. Um, and yeah. So now what we can do is fit the uh, fit the replacement grip. Now, um, obviously, it will just slide on like like so um, and there's plenty it's plenty long enough to fill the entire bar now just here there's a line this line here you are able to trim this grip from that line without damaging any of the um, internal um, tiny little wires that obviously are the heating elements you won't damage any of the heating elements if you trim no further than this line so if your bars are uh, too short for these grips you can trim it that much but no more any any further than that you will you will damage the elements now um these bars the, these grips themselves are designed to take for, to fit 22 mil bars if it, if the bar is a different diameter then these will not fit they'll just move around well they'll either move around if the bars are too small or they won't fit on if they're too wide so bear that in mind these ones are specifically for 22 mil grips uh, 22 mil bar sorry and uh, yeah what we need to do now is i'm just gonna get some uh, sandpaper and just rough up this um, because what i want to do is i want to give it a little key for for the glue now the glue um, is supplied in the kit and it works perfectly well it's perfectly good um, and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the glue um, on this end of the bar and then slide the grip on and allow that to draw the glue up the bar as i fit it um, if you put glue all over it as you slide it on all you'll do is you'll bunch all the glue up at this end and it'll just look horrible um, so yeah that's worth bearing in mind okay so what I'll do I'll get this roughed up and then I'll bring you back uh, once I've done that okay let's get this uh, this grip fitted as you can see I've roughed up the tube nicely so that'll give the glue some purchase something to stick into now what we want to be careful of is the positioning as you can see there's obviously this lump where the cable goes into it and what we don't want to do is position it such, in such a way that you know the brake can hit it so what I'm going to do put it on in that kind of position 
and likewise with the throttle one obviously that one will move around so we need to be careful of that one as well um, the glue as I said before what I'm going to do I'm going to I don't want to put it all over the whole tube because as we push the, the, the grip on it will just all be pushed up to this end and we'll have a nice bulge of glue at this end and it'll look horrible so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the glue I'm going to put some around this end of the tube like so now it is quite watery glue and a little bit just did drip off there so just make sure it doesn't drip off onto the bodywork drip on onto the floor is not really a drama I'm going to put a little bit all around the inside of the tube as well and then slide her on and then as I slide her on the glue will be drawn up the tube and we won't be left with a massive massive amount all bunched up at the far end now there is a little bit coming out the far end here so what I'm going to do I'm just going to clean that up before it sets and then yeah we'll uh, we'll be now letting that dry so what we want to do is just let it set um, it does take a few hours and what we want to do is not turn it on um, until such time as it has set so obviously I've got glue on my fingers now I need to clean this off before it sets um, and uh, yeah I'll bring you back in when we uh, get onto the other side Okay, as you can see, what I've done here is I've actually removed the throttle tube from the bike. Um, it's not particularly difficult, it's literally one screw, uh, again a T25 holding it in, take that one out and then the whole thing comes off and then you've just got to pop the cable out of the end, just like, just like so, and then, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So that's just so i can get this grip off without breaking the tube because the plastic tube is quite brittle and i'm going to stand a better chance of getting this one off with you know without as you can see there's already a bit of broken plastic in the end of the tube they're, they're quite brittle so what i may when end up doing with this one is actually cutting it off just to save the tube um and then uh yeah, we'll go about fitting the, the new grip in much the same manner as that one. Um, so yeah, what I'll do, I'll slice this off and I'll bring you in and uh, we'll, get it, um, we'll get it glued on. Okay, there we are. That is the grip fitted to the throttle tube. Now, um, what I've done is, that is basically interference fitted onto that throttle tube. There's no glue in there whatsoever and it's absolutely solid. Um, the, the, the fit is very very tight on the actual throttle tube itself there's some ridges there's four of them and at this end you can just about make out there was some uh, raised sections which held which engaged in the inside of the grip to hold it in place and I, what I had to do was file them flat just to, to allow that to fit and that is on there very snug I haven't even had to glue it and I can't I can't even turn it um, around the throttle tube so it's not going to go anywhere and let's be honest if it does go anywhere all i have to do is pull the grip off and put some glue on um but i'm, I'm fairly confident that that's going to be okay now obviously because i haven't used glue i've got the option of being able to rotate this around the throttle tube to get the ideal position uh, that's that's one of the benefits i guess but what i'm going to do i'm going to pop this back on and uh yeah get all the uh get the housing for the throttle all back together uh, and then what i'll do i'll bring you back in and then we'll get all the connections made get everything tie wrapped up and then we'll get the battery hooked up okay so now that the throttle is back on what we need to do is just route some of this cabling around so it's a little bit tidier i reckon they'll do and then we've got the two cables one from each one now the the two cables the, the two connectors are identical in every way it doesn't matter which way around you connect these because obviously they both come on um, and they're both expected to come on at the same time 
they're a bit awkward to get in because the pins like to move around inside the connectors. And there we go, that's one. And the other one is just there. And again, connect that one up. Just wiggle them around until they pop together. As I said, they're a bit funny about coming together sometimes. Come on, stop messing me around. There we go. And that's that. Right, now what we need to do is just tuck all of this cable in neatly out of the way. Um, as you can see, there is a little bracket up here for cables, so we'll tuck them behind it. Like so. And that way there neatly stowed. You can obviously get a tie wrap. Again, there's another little wiring bracket just there, which will keep everything, again, out of the way. And yeah, that's, I'd say that that's pretty much done. Now, obviously, we've got all the excess cable up from the battery. We'll what I'll probably do is pull all that back through and then just loop it um, and then tie all the excess up. So it's in here because there's space for it. There's plenty of room. Okay, now we've done this end, what we need to do is get to the battery end. Okay, after much fiddling around, I finally got the cable now coming into the battery box. As you can see, there's, there's two cables coming in here. One is for the Optimates and the other one is this one for the, for the grips. Uh, and as you can see, I put a little grommet in there just to prevent chafing on the side of the plastic, etc. Uh, okay, so um, obviously we've got now two extra cables that are going to go to the negative one for the charger one for the grips and then the other two positive ones are in here on the positive lead of the battery inside that little boot so as you can see now um all i need to do is get the battery back in so i'll get the battery back in and then um, obviously we can uh, we can give the grips a little test and hopefully um a little LED will come on and then I'll, we'll feel some heat at the grips so yeah leave me uh, leave, give me a couple of minutes to get this battery back on and uh, yeah, we'll give it a bash. Okay, battery is all connected up and uh, yeah, we should be good to go right now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna give them a test and hopefully this little LED should come on if they're working. I'll put it on low heat. Yeah, there we go. High heat is red, low heat is green. That's pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't realize it would do that low heat give it a give it a few seconds to uh, get a bit of heat into the grips it shouldn't take too long nothing is yet oh there we go i can uh, obviously you have to take my word for it i can i can feel it starting to starting to go warm now yeah Yep, same that side. So, yeah, they're uh, they're both working perfectly fine. Um, happy with that. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is just pull through any excess cable. Um, I am going to tie wrap the the cable that goes up to the battery in a few strategic little places, um, and then pull the excess through um, to the front. I think, and then um, any excess can be tie wrapped up out of the way uh, at the front. So I'll bring you back in a second and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this video up. So there we are, that is the, uh, all the cabling rooted and as you can see, any excess, it's just been tie wrapped neatly up there uh, out of the way. It's not gonna cause any problems whatsoever. Um, now all that remains is for me to put all the bodywork back together. Now what I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll do that off camera because is exactly the opposite way that it came off. Um, just got to do it in reverse order, as um, you know, as good old Haynes manuals would would say. Um, and then obviously the uh, the bar room weights need to go on. But other than that, the job is done. Um, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this video. Um, it's nice to do one with a little Django every now and again. Um, if you if you enjoyed it, then uh, you know give it a like. Uh, leave a comment in the bottom if you want to, and uh, we can uh, we can talk about anything that we've done. Um, I'll leave a uh, I'll leave a link to the kit. 
that I bought the uh, the moped specific one, the scooter specific one. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I'll get to putting this bodywork on. You guys take care. Bye bye now.